Welcome back guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, after 34 charges and a judge deemed a bit controversial by some people and a parade of witnesses and after two days of deliberations, 12 New Yorkers have found Donald Trump guilty of all charges in his hash money case. Now, this particular case is a history-making verdict following a history-making trial. It has never happened before in the history of America. Now, Donald Trump is the first U.S. or let me say the first former U.S. president with a criminal conviction per this judgment and the first majority, sorry, the first major party candidate to run for the White House as a felon. Let me take it again. As per this verdict, Donald Trump has made history and the verdict itself has made history, same as the trial, because Donald Trump is now the first former U.S. president with a criminal conviction and the first major party candidate to run for the White House as a felon. Now, the question is, what happens next after this verdict? What happens to him, his political aspirations, as he is still running for president in their upcoming presidential election for 2024, and also for him as a prospective voter? What does this do to him? So this video is seeking to answer some of these pertinent questions. This is a unique one because this case is a unique case. So I'm just going to highlight some key things you need to understand with regards to this conviction that has been handed down to former U.S. President Donald Trump as being guilty of this hash money case. Now, the first question we are tackling is, can Donald Trump still run for president after he has been found guilty? And the answer is yes. Yeah, he can still run for president, even though he's been found guilty and is now a convicted felon. Now, this is because the U.S. Constitution sets out relatively few requirements of eligibility for presidential candidates. It requires that they must be at least 35 years old, they must be a natural-born U.S. citizen, and should have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. There are no rules blocking candidates with criminal records from running from, for president. So based on this, Donald Trump is still eligible to run for president. But this guilty verdict still could sway November's presidential election because it turns out that a poll from one of the most popular polling sites found that 53% of voters in key swing states would refuse to vote for Donald Trump if he was convicted. Now, this poll was done prior to his conviction. Now, another poll from another credible source showed that 6% of Donald Trump's voters would be less likely to vote for him should it get to a tight race. For the presidential election if he was convicted so what happens to donald trump now now as it stands now after this verdict donald trump is still free out there on bail throughout the trial and this did not change after the verdict he was released on his own recognizance but then he will have to return to court on the 11th of july 2024 that is the date that Justice Juan Mekan has set aside for the sentencing hearing. Now, this sentencing hearing is going to be a tricky one. I'll get into it eventually. But then, per this date, Trump said just last week that his team will ask Justice Mekan for a different day to be set aside for this sentencing hearing. Because the date that they have selected, that is the 11th of July, is four days before the start of the Republican National Convention. So I think this is going to be a tricky one. You know, 
how would the court also look at this? Would they compromise? Would they meet them halfway? Interesting days ahead. I'm following and I'll bring you the updates. But then regardless of the dates, judge would have to make several factors as part of his consideration in the sentencing, including the age of Donald Trump. Now, possibly the sentence could involve a fine or a probation or supervision and possibly even prison time. Hmm. Interesting days ahead. Now, Donald Trump called the ruling a disgrace and said that he will appeal the guilty verdict. And that is a process that could actually take months or even longer to actually see through. Now, his legal team have indicated that they will vigorously fight this verdict with motions in the coming weeks. And if those motions prove unsuccessful, they will appeal following his sentencing. So all this means that even after sentencing, it will be highly unlikely that Donald Trump will leave the courts in handcuffs as he would be expected to remain free on bail while he appeals. So that is the first thing. But then what is going to be the grounds for his appeal? Well, the evidence of the adult film star Stormy Daniels, whose alleged encounter with Trump was the, at the heart of the issue, could be one of the first reasons for appeal. Now, the level of detail that was provided by this lady is really not necessary to the telling of the story. That is what a professor at one of the law schools in New York said. But then she also went on to talk about the fact that on the one hand, her detail makes her credible and as a prosecutor, you may want to provide enough detail so that the jury believes what she has to say. But then on the other hand, there's a line where it could become irrelevant and prejudicial. Because as it turns out, Trump's defense team have called twice for a mistrial during this lady's testimony. But then these motions were denied by the judge. But it's very likely that they can also leverage on this in their appeal. But that beyond that, there's also the legal strategy that they can take through the district attorney in this case. And that could also provide a grounds for appeal. Now, falsifying business records can be a lower level misdemeanor in New York. But Trump faced more serious felony charges because of a supposed second crime, which has to do with an alleged illegal attempt to influence the 2016 election. Hmm. Interesting. But then, the, the, the next question, that's the third question is, with all this, during the sentencing, can Donald Trump go to prison? Now, it is a possibility, although it's highly unlikely, that the former U.S. president will serve time behind bars. Now, all the 34 charges he faced are all class E felonies in New York, and that is the lowest tier in New York. So each charge carries a maximum sentence of four years. And as noted, there are several reasons why Justice Mekan could choose a lesser punishment. And I mentioned that one of the reasons includes Donald Trump's age and his lack of previous convictions and the fact that the charges involve a non-violent crime. He could consider Donald Trump's violations of the court's gag orders during the trial. Now, it is also a possibility that the judge would weigh the unprecedented nature of the case, perhaps choosing to avoid putting a former president and current candidate behind bars. But there is also the question of practicality. Trump, like all former presidents, is actually entitled to lifelong protection from the Secret Service. So this means that some agents would need to protect him in prison if he goes to prison. So how practical would it be as a judge knowing all these things to sentence him to prison? You are literally sending the Secret Service assigned to him to prison with him 
and what sort of prison term is is that going to be like it's 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 so interesting and like i keep repeating this indicates that there are interesting days ahead now even so it can still be dicey to run a prison system with a former president as an inmate it's going to be a huge security risk and also very expensive to keep him safe so <laughs> i don't think he will be sentenced to jail but well that is just my opinion because it's going to be something else if he is now the fourth thing is can he vote now it's likely that donald trump will be able to vote this time around and where trump is a resident a person with a felony conviction from another state is ineligible to vote only if the conviction would make the person ineligible to vote in the state where the person was convicted now trump was convicted in new york and in new york felons are allowed to vote as long as they are not currently incarcerated this means that unless trump is behind bars come the fate of november 2024 he should be eligible to cast his ballot so in the reverse it means that if trump goes to jail he cannot vote now the last and final question can donald trump pardon himself if he becomes the president now the question is can he pardon himself from all these things because as a president the president has the power to pardon but now with him being the convicted felon can he use that same power on himself and pardon himself the answer is a big no presidents can issue pardons for those who have committed federal offenses but the harsh money case in new york state is a state matter meaning it would be out of donald trump's reach even if he became the president again after the november 2024 elections now the same is true for trump's case in georgia where he has been accused of criminally conspiring to overturn his narrow defeat by president joe biden in the state during the 2020 election pardon powers are unclear for trump's two federal cases but then it doesn't seem likely he can extend that pardon himself it seems more like it might look like an abuse of power what do you think about this case all oh, that there is to it i think that this has set up the table for interesting days ahead of the upcoming 2024 presidential elections in the united states of america i'm following this one keenly this is not really a true crime thing but it still involves crime but it's such of a unique nature i needed to bring this i hope you enjoyed it let me know what your opinions are on this whole case and what you think the possibilities are going to be as far as Trump's sentencing is concerned. Stay safe out there. I'll catch you on the next one. And if you are watching from the US, let me know what the climate is with all this going on with the former US president. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there.